Thanks for tuning into the Boston Roll channel. Liking the video and subscribing to the channel are free and easy for you, and they help me out a lot. If you want to go further with your support, Patreon and YouTube membership offer access to the Boston Roll Discord community, early access to lists, written content, things like that. You can have me play your deck on the channel, and the highest tiers come with individual coaching sessions. If you use YouTube membership, you also get sweet badges and emotes integrated here into YouTube. You can support the channel while you shop at tcgplayer.com by using my affiliate link in the video description. And you can play any deck anytime by using a cardhoarder.com loan account on Magic Online. If you want to wear your support, check out the merch store. And of course, thanks for being here. Now let's go play some Magic. Welcome back once again to the Boston Roll channel. Today we're playing Legacy, and at the request of Patreon subscriber Chris, I get to play this blue 8 cast deck that has been crushing me constantly in the leagues lately. Blue artifact decks are no stranger to me or this channel. I have played basically every flavor of Urza in Modern and Legacy that's ever been existed. The Echo decks, the Hall Reacher decks, all of those are well documented on this channel. I think I've only played 8 cast once before, maybe zero. I, I don't know that I've dug into this deck since it was really optimized, and I'm excited to do it now. Like I said, I keep queuing into this deck. It's fast, it's powerful, it's a really good Magic Online League deck because your games will generally go pretty quick and you crush a lot of the decks that people want to play in the leagues and you get your league done quick and you can join another league. Great for grinding qu QPs, qualifier points, and I don't really care about that. But this deck is good. I know a lot of smart players choose to play it on purpose, like in real tournaments that count. And that's the biggest endorsement to me. Like, you can run into a deck a thousand times in a league, but if, like, the, the big names in the Legacy community aren't actually playing it when it counts, then that tells me something. But I have seen people I trust the opinions of playing this deck with real money on the line. Basically what we're doing here, if you haven't seen this deck before, is getting a bunch of artifacts in play and then winning somehow. The ways that we do that are... Thoughtcast draws two cards if you and has affinity for artifacts. So if you have four artifacts, it's cost one. One mana draw two is pretty potent. Two thirds of the way to Ancestral Recall. Much better than Serum Visions. That's just a good, good spell. Thought Monitor for Modern Horizons 2. I'm glad this card's finally getting the respect it deserves. The, I thought this one was a heater coming out of a spoiler season, but no one was really talking about it. I recorded with Aether Vile. Urza Saga Affinity on like day one of the Modern Horizons 2 release and I had this card and it was fucking nutso and it, it's really taken off now people know about it this is just another thought cast on a 2-2 body don't let that seven mana value fool you the, this card will also cost one some large amount of the time speaking of Urza Saga this is a core engine of the deck you have so many artifacts in this deck just tucked into your mana base with Seed of the Synod, Lotus Petal, Mox Opal etc that your first construct is frequently a 4-4 or beyond which is very different than the the fair like ragavan or lands decks where it's a 1-1 or 2-2 a lot of the time and then you work up to 4-4 like this shit starts as a 4-4 and then attacks as a 6-6 the first time you actually turn it sideways this is a really good urza saga deck got a pair of nettle cysts in the deck this thing is just as big as possible equipped creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact and, and or enchantment you control that's and it has living weapon so it comes with its own creature equip cost is pretty low for two urza saga is an enchantment by the way so it counts that on top of the obvious artifacts and the engines are sai and emery emery usually costs one in this deck easy turn one play to make with all these zero mana artifacts she mills four and then you can cast artifacts from your graveyard every turn including thought monitor that's an artifact a lot of the times if the games get grindy with this deck thought monitor ends up just like plunking in for two damage every turn if they ever kill it you just recast it and draw two more cards so they can't really kill it but they're also dying to it i've been on the other side of that exchange enough times i know how hard it is plus this is a chalice of the void deck chalice is disruptive but there's a lot of ways to remove it in legacy these days but with emery you could just play another one or play the same one again if they destroyed it rather than exile it I love me some memory. I'm excited I get to play with it. And of course, on the, the least sexy end of the Emery spectrum, you could just tap her for mana, basically, with Lotus Petal. Just tap Emery, play Petal from the graveyard. It's basically build your own Birds of Paradise. 
or tap draw a card, build your own archivist with Mishra's Bauble or Urza's Bauble. Emery's always got something to do here. And Psy, of course, the Master Thopterist. This is the, one of the major win conditions in the deck. Whenever you cast an artifact, you make a 1 1, and this deck casts a lot of artifacts. So you're coming in with giant, giant creatures with Urza Saga and Nettlesist. You're coming in with a mountain of small creatures, Death of a Thousand Cuts with Psy and with Thought Monitor. You're drawing cards the whole way. You're backing it up with Force of Will and Chalice of the Void. This deck is so good. Really high power deck. Really well built these days. Uh, it took a long time to find. I don't want to say necessarily the optimal shell. I don't know if it's even optimized or if that's just a meta call. Like I don't really love the word optimized list, but this is a very powerful focused build of something that took a long time to get to. I'm excited to try it out. Let's get into it. I'm on the play in round one. I don't have a blue source, but I do have a bobble to redraw and turn one chalice with force backup. I think you keep these. Bobble also gets to peek at their hand and let me know if Chalice on one is even good. I hope it is. It's my only plan right now. In a lot of trouble to a wasteland. Guess we'll see how this goes. Maybe this hand's not as good as initially advertised. Let's have a look. Crucible of Worlds. Um, That's probably pretty bad for me. I'm still going to play the Chalice on one. That gets exploration, um, crop rotation. Those sort of things, though this is certainly a wasteland deck if they have Crucible Worlds. I didn't want a Chalice on zero, even though they I know they have Mox Diamond because my uh, do I lose the Force outright? I think I want to keep the second Force and pitch a Thoughtcast. I didn't want to anyway. I didn't want a Chalice on zero because that's really important to my deck to be able to do, even though I knew this was probably a Mox Diamond deck. Look, here's a Mishra's Bobble that. I wouldn't have been able to cast if I chaliced on zero. They're drawing another diamond. I guess I'll continue deploying artifacts here. This just like waves my entire ass in the air and says, I don't have a second land. I just missed a land drop. All right, Lotus Paddle. Rhinosphere. Uh, that's really bad. Glad I kept the second force. Well, now we are in top deck mode. Emery would be a great draw here. Okay, that's good. And. I'm going to put the pedal in because they've shown me they have prison elements to this deck. F6, here we go. I don't think they are lands or a deck where Chalice on 1 is actually good. Chalice on 1 is good against lands for the reasons I said, but I, I do not believe this is lands anymore. Oh, Karn the Great Creator. Uh, that's bad for me. Hope they can't cast that this turn. Well, it was in their hand already, so they need a mana source to cast it. Oh, they have the Serum Powder that they cast last turn. Now I can't win. <laughs> Just Karn the Great Creator deck. All right, yeah, uh, this, this hand lesson learned. You can't keep hands that don't actually move forward. Without that blue source, this is uh, not really a good one. Well, Emery just showed up. Probably too late. They're going to start blowing up my lands next turn. Uh, yeah, they can... Liquid Metal Coating, my island. Guess I'll give myself a chance to draw another island. They could also just Liquid Metal... No, they can't coat Emery. Yeah, they can't coat Emery because I can activate her in response and then just cast the Thought Monitor later in the turn. They can coat and destroy island, and then I can't use my blue sources because of Karn. I'd have to draw another island. There's the coating. Going after Ancient Tomb. Interesting. I would have taken me off blue, but what do I know? Okay, uh, let's do a quick artifact count here. That Seed of the Sinan might have been clutch. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I'm actually one short of Thought Monitor anyway. Yeah, maybe they counted and I didn't. Yeah, I'm one short. All right. They got me. That went poorly. They appear to be a... I don't know if they're colorless, but they are definitely an artifact-based prison deck i think chalice is just comes right out uh that that's not where this game's gonna go i think force negation comes in for the chalice just surviving the the wave is going to be really important 
Drafttigger's Cage, no. Spell Bomb, no. Raven Form. Raven Form's a dope one. Exile Target Artifact or Creature. It's control against a 1 1 bird. Engineered Explosives can clear out some hateful shit. They might be a Chalice deck of their own. Uh, that's entirely possible. Raven Form and Explosives. Can I fit all these cards in the deck? I'm generally a fan of shaving on Mox Opals in Game 2 situations, especially when I know they have Karn. That does hurt my ability to have turn 1 Emery, which is pretty important, but I think Mox Opal being a dead draw some large percentage of the time against their prison deck with Karn makes it worth cutting. Also not sure Retrofitter Foundry is going to be part of the plan. They can just shut that down so effectively. Maybe I don't need the Engineered Explosives if I have the Raven Forms. I'm just out of cards that I want to cut. And I do want the Raven Forms in to maximize my blue count for these eight forces that are now in the deck. This looks presentable. Let's do it. Uh, I don't mind starting on Urza Saga. I don't like that Force of Negation is the only spell in my hand. I am all dressed up with all sorts of places to go right now. Um... This hand does kind of fold to Wasteland. I'm actually going to keep this. You can all tell me I'm crazy later. That's fine. Uh, but the redraw off Bobble, plus, like, they, they would need Wasteland. I'm The only thing I'm worried about right now is Wasteland. Like, the Saga will beat Arn. It will beat Trinisphere. It will beat so many things. Uh, it, I'm just worried about Wasteland. I am going to Bobble them now. They have their own saga. And I'm gonna get my petals in, and I can hard cast Force of Negation if I have to. So it, it's literally Wasteland that I'm worried about. Okay, they have their own saga. Not gonna Force of Negation an Expedition map. Okay. We got a plan. Ancient Tomb can make my constructs without losing any Lotus Petals. My constructs are outpacing theirs pretty aggressively right now. From Monolith, not fighting over that. End step, make a construct. Untap, draw, make a construct. And get Pithing Needle and name Urza Saga right now. Just go swing for the fences. I have a blue card to go with Force now. I could Pithing Needle Expedition map or Grim Monolith. Your model is only the untap, though. Okay, I'm going to Pithing Needle Urza Saga. It's top 10 anime betrayals. Then land. I can Explosives on zero, and then Thought Monitor. Or I can just play Shadow Spear, attack for six. Thought Monitor is my blue card. But I have a lot of blue cards. I'm going to play Shadow Spear, and just make sure I don't lose to Karn right now. How about that? And equipping Shadow Spear would actually cost me power and toughness because I lose two Lotus Petals, which are representing four power and toughness on this board to give a creature plus one plus one. But right now my opponent's dead on board and facing down. They have to be at Force of Negation. Shut up Manifold Key. They have large quantities of mana now. Arn. Let's hope they don't have two of those. Another Saga. Okay, that one's also not on. We do have a second Karn. Does that matter? We can make a blocker. I can clear Karn this turn by playing Engineered Explosives. Or I guess I don't even need to do that. I could just attack Karn. Engineered Explosives on one hurts me. On two, I can't do because I don't have mana for that. On one is just too bad. Okay. Um, I'm going to play Engineered Explosives for zero to grow my constructs. Then I'm going to attack Karn with both of them. I couldn't get the Shadow Spear equipped last turn. If I had trampled this turn, we would win. Equip Shadow Spear now that I can, in case they have another Karn. And I'm going to slow roll this Ancient Tomb. All right, let's see if they have a third Karn. Nope, we had the Saga Superiority in that matchup. Saga Mirrors are fun when you're on the play. I don't think my sideboard plan changes. Karn is so scary. but. That's what the eight forces are for. All right, back in. Same deck. Let's do it. Oh no, this is basically my hand from game one again. Though, I have Saga plus Tomb, which is a plan on its own. Okay. 
I'm going to keep. This is also a hand that is bad against Wasteland, but which we haven't actually seen yet. But we've seen Expedition Map and Crucible. Okay, now Wasteland confirmed. Yeah, my plan is to play Saga, use Ancient Tomb to shit out creatures, and eventually Saga will find Mox Opal. Defense Grid, uh, that's a problem. I'm going to Force of Negation, pitching Force of Negation. I want my creatures to stick around. Okay, uh, I could turn one Emery instead of... Oh, I can do both. Yeah, because you can count Emery for... Yeah, you you announce Emery, and she costs two when you announce her, and then when you go to pay costs, the cost is already locked in, and you can sack your Lotus Petal, and then you get Emery. Okay, Emery's on. Graveyard full of Lotus Petals. I have Force. My Saga's ready. I saga first, which should help against their Saga. I don't really want to Force anything that isn't Karn. I know where we are. Ancient Tomb... I cast Lotus Petal from my graveyard. Play Bobble. I think having lots of artifacts and guaranteeing a blue card is more important than drawing a card with Bobble right now. I could have drawn two cards with Bobble with Emery and skipped the Lotus Petal. Maybe that would have been better. But I think having the biggest construct is going to be important. Yeah, I'm going to make two constructs and then needle Urza Saga. We've seen this play pattern before. And I think it's still good now. Make a construct. Well, now with Emery, okay, they have three artifacts. I'll have one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I want to start bobbling for extra cards. Get to make another construct. They're making one in response. They know they're about to lose it. And I do think that's better than Shadow Spear. Okay, I've turned off Urza Sagas. A replay. Bobble from my graveyard. I'm not ready to replay or play um, Thought Monitor yet. They can search for their own Pithing Needle. They could search for a Shadow Spear. They're in just full tutor mode right now. They could Pithing Needle Urza's Bobble, but I think it's fine as a plus one, plus one to my team. It's Crusade. Bring up Expedition Map. God, what is this doing? Entry's fair. Okay. They're on like this crazy multi-turn line to try to dig out of this, but I think they're imminently in trouble. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, yeah, I want to keep the bobble in play. I think I want to play Thought Monitor this turn. Come on, Blue Source. I own Saga. I have to lose Lotus Petal to cast Thought Monitor. I think that's worth it. And it's net even on artifacts in play but i might draw more artifacts and i'm just stubbornly holding on to this sigh in my hand forever seven sevens i think that now i could pitch force of will thought cast a force of will and i could get sigh to work i'm playing the saga that's that's happening i'm gonna attack with my sevens they have to remember to Inventor's Fair before damage, or else they don't have the artifacts to activate it. Okay, they remembered. What's the play? Snaring Bridge, okay. I have a few answers to that, including the Force of Will in my hand. Got Manifold Key with their Saga. They have a Wasteland. I'm gonna Force of Will this Pitching Thought Cast. And we did it. As hostile as Game 1 felt, we were the... A hostile deck once i understood the matchup once the chalices came out and the forces came in we became a delver deck basically they're very good at ignoring chalice going above prison pieces and unlocking out artifacts but i'm very good at countering key spells while putting damage on the board what yeah once we knew that the uh keeping the all in on chalice hand was not a plan this matchup became pretty smooth i am on the play in round two and this hand, tragically, has three Mox Opals in it. I would keep this hand if one of these Opals was another Bobble, or if it had an Island, the, but obviously, you can't keep a hand with no mana. And already mulled to five, basically. One looks better. I'm going to keep this, and I'm sending one of these Bobbles to the bottom. Mishra's, I think, is worse than Urza's, though so they're probably pretty close. I don't actually know. All right, I'm going to 
I think Mistress is better on turn zero. Okay, Urza's is Bobble. I want to draw a card and know what I'm playing against. Playing against a Ponder deck. Okay, good to know. Here's my Urza Saga. If they're a Ponder deck with Wasteland, could be in trouble. If they're a Ponder deck without Wasteland, might be fine. Found a blue source and an artifact. That's good news. Okay, this is not Wasteland. And there's that Ponder. Saga ticks up. Ancient Tomb comes in. The boat is leaving the harbor. Take a Construct in the end step. They just land Goad. I believe this is a Retrofitter Foundry situation. Going to make another Construct, of course. They are plowing the first one. That is not what I'm going to fight over. Yeah, Retrofitter Foundry is what I'm worried about when I play against this sort of deck. So here's Foundry. There's Ancient Tomb that can immediately produce a servo. And I'm just playing Lotus Petal to increase the size of my constructs in case they sort to plow a share again. I'll at least take the life points. But I'm not going to spend a Lotus Petal now to Thought Cast. That would cost me Petal and 2 life, and I don't get to activate Foundry. I guess I could activate Foundry first, then cast off Petal, but I'd rather play the seat and just do it all. Heads up next turn. Retrofitter Foundry. That's cheating. Uh, or Prismatic Ending is cheating. That's fine. Uh, I could force that, but I think we can do better still. Ooh, that's such a tr dirty trick. I really wanted to go into Thoughtcast Banana Mode this turn, but the follow-up Urza Saga, too good. And they missed a land drop. They are treading water over there. And it's not a good look for the blue deck. Yeah, they didn't cast spells, but I don't actually need to cast spells to win the game. Seed of the Synod, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, all right, I'm going to Thought Cast because that one is on the, the cheapest possible mode. They forced my Thought Cast pitching Jace. That's a deal. Attack with my creatures. Before blocks, I'm going to make another construct. Just get that extra point in there. There's the plowshares. That's still not the fight. I'm ahead here. I'm just squeezing out two for ones left and right. I got a force out of them. I got a plowed. They, they've they cast two plows and a prismatic ending just to answer the first Ursa saga. Yeah, I got a two for one, got a three for one. They missed some land drops. I'm holding back this force of will for something that would actually beat me, but it seems they don't have it. Okay, a blue-white control deck. I mean, it could be Bant. We don't actually know if they're pure blue-white or Bant. Yeah, I really didn't see enough to get a lot of good information about their deck. Chalice is going to be good. The Needle will find targets. I might just be 100% pre-boarded right now. Like, all I saw was Force, Jace, and White Removal. I could bring in the Soul Guide Lantern just in case they are a Bant deck with Uro. I think that's the only change I would make if I make any changes at all. I'm going to shave a Mox Opal and bring in Soul Guide Lantern, and that's the only change I'm going to make. I'm just going to board light, because they didn't show me any reason not to. Soul Guide Lantern gets Uro and Loam, which are both popular cards in Bant decks. Uh, this is a good one. I'm going to keep it. We're coming out blazing with Urza Saga again. No Force Backup this time, but might not need it. We'll see. Bant confirmed. I love being right. Urza Saga. And I could Pithing Needle just name Wasteland right now. Some band decks do have Wasteland in them. That's just the card I'm worried about in my position right now. Whether they have it or not, I at least check the box. I built Affinity. We're just going to have one of these absolutely miserable Saga games again. Miserable from the, the blue side. Feels good on my side. And even if they, well, they pondered now, so they won't have it. But even if they had Uro this turn, I'm untapping into a Saga Pop that can get the Soul Guide Lantern and answer Uro. Make my construct. Drew Emery. That's fun. Make another construct. We're getting plowed again, or are we getting dressed down? Yeah, dressed down would be pretty good here. Starts to plow shares. Wow, I love that. And I'm going to. Just get the Retrofitter Foundry again. It continues to be the card that I want. And here's Ancient Tomb that can activate it. Do I play Emery? I think so. 
yeah. Choose one that you just want online at all times. I'm going to skip the Nettle Cyst and activate Foundry instead. If they can answer Foundry, I think they have to do it this turn. And I want to get something out of it before it goes. There's a row. I milled Chalice and my Shadow Spear, by the way, with Emery. A servo in the end step. Bobble. Okay, I could go into Psy Time. I could start drawing cards with Thoughtcast. I could do both. I'm going to start with Psy. Because he represents a lot of damage very quickly. He's in play with no resistance. Emery is going to play Lotus Petal. Because Lotus Petal can play Thought Cast. And then, oh, Nettle Sist is the 3-drop. I don't know why I thought, I always think that card costs 2. <laughs> it's already busted. Doesn't need to cost 2. I'm going to make a Servo just to get maximum damage off this attack. There it is. That's my game plan. It's in play. Oh, they cast Brainstorm. That means they're not Uroing. Yeah, the Uro didn't make a land drop last turn, so they... Their hand was all spells. Dress down only answers one of these things. Uh, explosives on zero. Uh, Seeds of Innocence would be pretty rough here. Do I want an extra card versus just extra damage? 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, the extra card could actually take lethal off the board. Seed of the Synod. And I'm going to play. Chalice on one to see what they got. If they have a plow or any such thing, I want to see it now. If they don't have plow, uh, they could have endurance. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do I care about endurance? Probably not. Playing Nettle Cyst pre combat just gives me another giant fatty and another Thopter. Okay, I'm making my attacks. Endurance doesn't kill Psy. If they have Coatl, it doesn't have Death Touch. There's Coatl, sure. Oh, Terminus, that's fun. Well played. Okay, so they're a Miracle version. Okay, second main, I'm going to play Emery. Just reload. They can Uro this turn. Oh, there's my Soul Guide Lantern, but I have Chalice now, so it doesn't even matter. And now they can Uro... Can't Shadow Spear or Soul Guide Lantern. Yeah, Chalice on one actually hits both of my one drops that happen to be in the graveyard. It didn't board in Raven form, so this Uro is just gonna exist. Matic ending that. Okay, nothing I can do about that. I am gonna Urza's Bobble them though. I, I do think the second card is important. Okay, Days Undoing. So they have Hall Breachers in their deck. Pretty happy to see Saga, just in general, always. Saga, trigger, I cast Bobble from my graveyard, and one, two, three, Nettle Cyst. That's in play as a 7-7, seven, seven. that's bigger than Uro. I could move my other Nettle Cyst onto Emery. I don't think I want to do that. I'll just make the biggest asshole I can right now. If they have Teferi, I'm in trouble, but... Or... Prismatic Ending also clears this. It puts me to one. Okay. We're not in a great spot. Got Prismatic Ending for two. That gets around Chalice. Burrow gets to put me to one. And them to 19. Our set. There's that. So I can't bobble now. Force of Will in their hand. Okay. Yeah, that Nar set's pretty good against Thought Monitor. And finding the blue card for Force a little late here. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have six artifacts and enchantments. So Emery can become larger. Emery's eight, nine. I can't cast this force anyway, so I might as well put the extra stat and flying body into play. Okay, they force pitching days on doing that. And if I bobble now, I can draw a card because it'll be their turn. Emery can afford to be one point smaller. Force of Vigors in their hand. Okay, we're dead. Yeah, that Terminus. I did not play around Terminus. That's not a card that's usually in decks. These days. Okay. You got me. Good to know. Raven form, I probably want to exile Uro. If I exile Uro in any matchup ever, I think that th that deck would have a hard time racing me. 
I don't think I want Pithing Needle. I really want to cut another Opal. I don't know if I actually can do that. How low can you go on those? I am going to cut another Opal. I'm off it. And here's my plan. Let's do it. Opening hand has turn one Psy if I want it, or turn one Retrofitter Foundry. I don't want to do that, though. That just lines up really poorly against... I'm going to keep this hand. But the turn one Retrofitter Foundry, they just get to Prismatic ending it, and that's that. I'll play Shadow Spear and pass the turn. My plan is next turn, go Ancient Tomb, Psy, Lotus Petal, Retrofitter Foundry, and then I just have a bunch of things ahead of their removal. Do not shuffle. All right, let's see if Psy gets forced. Hope not. Nope. All right, we're in there. Yeah, the great thing about Psy when you're on this side, and the terrible thing when you're on the other side, is that removal isn't good against it because it usually brings a couple friends immediately. And these Thopters can immediately turn into Constructs. I can make a 4 4 in the end step. Sack a Thopter, make a Construct, bang. 4 4 beatdown mode has arrived. Saga off the top, you love to see it. I'm going to equip Shadow Spear to something. Am I going to equip Shadow Spear to something? I could put it on Psy. Yeah, I get the life back immediately. Let's diversify a little bit here. Waddle doesn't have Death Touch yet. I can make a Servo and go wide, or I can make another 4-4 four four with my existing Thopter. I could just get completely blown out by Terminus right now. But even Terminus, I can start making Servos again, and the Saga is here. I didn't put Shadow Spear on the 4-4 four four because that's the easy one to kill anyway. Alright, that's really good. Uh, do I want to make a 4-4 four four or another 1-1? One one? What did they pitch to do this with? Ice Fang Kowaddle. Yeah, I can have an additional artifact for all of the synergies that go with that, or I could have one bigger creature. 4, 8, 9, 10, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's a two turn clock either way. I'm going to go wide. Because Psy also has the Sack 2 artifacts draw a card text on it. Okay, they had Terminus anyway, just doesn't matter. All right. That was a really that lined up really well. They were able to kill my two non-creature threats and then stack a terminus on top. Extremely well played. But I'm cheating. I have another Urza Saga. At it the whole time. That's not Kawaddle mana. Brainstorm. Ooh. Brainstorm, no land drop. Someone's in a brainstorm lock over there. Seat of the Synod. Chalice on one. Let's start to constrict the options. Yeah, if they have force, they have to counter this. When you're brainstorm locked, you don't get to let Chalice resolve. Got a two for one out of that. Oh, pitching back to basics. I'm glad that's gone. Jesus. Oh, they had another one. Well, I'm still making my construct. I'm not not doing that. I can get Opal and have a bunch of mana. Yeah, I think Opal is the play here. Get another Saga down, equip Shadow Spear, and continue the beats. They just killed one of their own lands with this Urza Saga, or with this Back to Basics. Hi, happy to see you. Another basic land, happy to see that also. I'm sure my opponent is not happy to see that. Birds to Plowshares. Um, I am going to play around um, Prismatic Ending. I could have made an, a Saga in response and gained an extra life, but I don't think being at 27 versus 26 matters that much compared to the fact that I know their deck has Sorcery Speed Removal in it. Like so. There's the Sorcery Speed Removal. And yeah, that's gone. I make my Construct. It's a 3-3. I can make it... Oh, there's the... Yeah, there's the Lethal Artifact. I was about to say I need one more Artifact to make it 4-4 four, four, or 5-5. Five, five. Um, do I want Soul Guide Lantern, Lotus Petal versus Bobble? Opal will be on. Okay, yeah, we're in business here. I'm going to get Soul Guide Lantern just to make sure I don't get cheesed out by Uro at any point. If they have Force of Will for this Psy, then Bobble resolves, but Psy is good for two extra artifacts, and we're in there. 
Relentless pummeling of the fair blue deck. I've been on the other side enough times to know how that feels. They had Terminus, so they're more ready than me. I haven't played Terminus in months. But still, we uh, overpowered it with the Urza Saga. GG's. We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. Friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards, and you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. On the play in round 3, we've been pretty good at die rolls, which does help in your Chalice deck. Uh, this particular Chalice hand is not a keep though. Only one mana source, and it's not a repeatable one. Oh baby, it's getting worse. Okay, it's getting better. Keep this hand. I think I send Basic Island to the bottom and something else. Basic Island's got to go. I need Saga. I need Tomb. I want Psy. I think it's Opal. Yeah, sorry, Opal. That's the mulligan life. And I want to use this bobble to know what I'm up against. Got a little info here. Oh, we're playing against a Cabal Ritual deck. All right, we could be dead. I have two blue cards. Neither of them are forced, though. Oh, it's Oops All Spells. We're very dead. I was hoping it was uh, the Epic Storm or Ad Nauseam, someone that was going to give us a minute, but we don't have a minute. We got nothing. Okay, I'm just going to concede. I, I, I don't need them to show me they know how to execute the combo. You win. Okie dokie. Uh, Torpor Orb comes in. That stops Balustrade Spy and tosses Oracle from triggering. Graph Digger's Cage and Soul Guide Lantern on a Graveyard Hate. Force of Negation. Force of Negation can miss against Oops All Spells. They can actually just go off through Force of Negation because their payoffs are mostly creatures. But you still bring it in. Uh, Shadow Spear, Retrofitter, Foundry don't matter. We're not grinding. I want all my fast mana because I want to maximize turn one Chalice or Torpor Orb sort of stuff. Nettle Sis doesn't matter. We're not attacking. Every blue card matters because we need to turn on these eight forces somehow. Bobble might be less important. I think Mishra's is worse than Urza's. Knowing what's in their hand can help you set up a Chalice or a Torpor Orb or whatever. Every blue card is uncuttable. Chalice is disruptive. Pithing Needle does have text. You can name Undercity Informer, and then they only have Balustrade Spy to go off with. I want all the fast mana. Yeah, uh, just by process of elimination, Mishra's Bobble is the last card. That's cuddle here. Okay, let's do it. The plan is clear. Okay, I've turned one Torpor Orb with Force Backup. We're keeping this. I do appreciate how binary Oops All Spells makes all decisions. Like, sideboarding is easy. Keeping hands is easy. It's just like, does this interact on turn one or zero or not? If yes, put it in. If no, get rid of it. And I'm going to bobble for some info. And it's a redraw for force. Ancient Tomb. And Torpor Orb is more powerful than Chalice. In this matchup. Do I want a Chalice for zero for good measure? I think I do. Which is a little awkward. Like that does hurt my deck. But it's going to hurt their deck more. Like turning off their Lotus Petals and their Pact of Negations. Oh, and I Chalice for zero brilliantly to pr protect my own Graveyard Hate. So fucking smart. I'm going to pretend I did that on purpose. Anyway, here's Soul Guide Lantern. I had to exile my own thing. That's funny. Yeah, this is a pretty good keep against Oops All Spells. Now I just need to find a blue source and get one of these beaters in and actually win the game. Oh, wait, no, I don't. I versus Saga in play. No, we're good. I can activate Saga twice, tutor up Mox Opal, cast Psy, and then we're just doing it. Or I could just not do that. I could keep Psy in my hand forever in case I draw another force and just have double blue card floating and let my sagas do all the work. I think that's reasonable, actually. Yeah, I am not going to cast Psy. Even if I can. And I can, because I have Opal if I want it. I don't necessarily want to show them that I have more graveyard hate. Like, I don't need to show them Cage. I, I don't think they're beating what I already have. I am going to get Opal. I just think it's the best one left to get. And I'm, let's see, uh, six. If I attack for six, they're at 14. Then if I attack for 12 next turn, if I play Psy right now and Bobble, 
the bobble gets countered, but yeah, I actually casting Psy is the difference between a one turn clock and a two turn clock or two turn and three turn, depending on whose turn it is. Yeah, getting this extra Thopter in pre combat now uh, means they get one more draw step this game instead of two. Okay. Yes, that is true. I'm attacking for 23 instead of 18 this way. Okay, things are a lot easier on the play. That's where all of my hateful permanents can show up. Now I have to survive turn one with my forces to get to the hateful permanents, so mulligan decisions become a lot more important. Same deck, though. Nothing changing. Okay, uh, I'm keeping. I have Force of Will and a turn one Torpor Orb. If they have a, the turn one with protection, they got me. If we go to turn two, I probably got them. Or if they, they're going without protection. They mulled to six. Let's see how this goes. Tapped land, you'll love to see it. Now we're in business. Ancient Tomb. Lotus Petal. Torpor Orb. I can play Emery, who awkwardly doesn't get to mill, but I think it's still worth doing. Yeah, it's still a creature. I still have a blue card in my hand, and they still have to remove this Torpor Orb before their deck can function at all. Seed of the Synod, Urza's Bobble. The Bobble's a good draw. Let's see what we're up against. All right, the Undercity Informer is in their hand. Bobble again. I could be attacking with Emery, but I would rather lock up my protection at first. We'll figure the rest out later. They do have Cabal Therapy, so if they find a black source, Force of Will is probably the easy name. But next turn I can Cage plus Thoughtcast. Cage turns off Emery, so I gotta do that first. Land, cast my last bobble for the game. Bobble, Graph Digger's Cage, Thoughtcast, Zero Mana Artifact, Thought Monitor. Oh, right. I, that doesn't draw cards. LOL. I should have cast Psy. Okay. It is it is a 2-2, two -two, though. And bobbling them is still better than not bobbling them. Force of Vigor, my goodness. That's good to know about. Okay. So I am not as safe as I appear due to that Force of Vigor. We're going to have to start going to discard. Starting now. We discarded the Informer. Ancient Tomb. One, two, three. I'm going to cast Psy. I'm going to start getting on board and winning this game. I can hard cast Force, and now I'm actually attacking. But I hope they don't go for Vigor right now. All right, they didn't. It's good news. And now it's just beat down mode before they string together this Force of Vigor Cabal Therapy. Like, we can see right now, face up, the Force of Vigor removing Orb and Cage and then untap Cabal Therapy, you name Force of Will, and kill you. Like, it's all there. It's heads up. Face up. Gotta reduce damage before that happens. Back with all of my creatures. And I'm gonna put another three power into play. Don't get to draw two, though. Nice Torpor Orb. I will Force of Will, Force of Vigor. Because we see the Cabal Therapy. We know they can fight over that. I don't think this deck plays Veil of Summer, but if they Pact of Negation my Force of Will now, then they lose on their upkeep. One, two, three, four, five. I don't think my life total matters. I'm gonna hard cast. All right, they just scooped to that. Didn't have it. That took too long to get together, and now they're dead. That was actually scary. Yikes. But we, we, we navigated it. I finally lost a die roll. My life is hard. Um... This hand doesn't have blue mana, and even if it did, it doesn't really set up. This is an easy mulligan. Okay, uh, this one is a little chonky, but I do like the Urza Saga. I'm going to keep this and bottom one of the Thought Monitors. Underground C. All right, we're playing against Doomsday. Confirmed. Lock it in. Ponder. They did not shuffle their library. Okay. Mox Opal. I was going to say I would love to see Ancient Tomb, but Mox Opal does... Get me in the right direction here. I'm going to play out Lotus Petal to play around Days. Like, if I force Doomsday and they Days, I want to be able to pay for it. I'm going to slow roll the Opal. Or maybe not. They're a discard deck. I'm not going to slow roll the Opal. Brainstorm from the opponent. I think Seed of the Synod is my best draw. I'd be pretty happy with that one. Ancient Tomb is good too, though. 
fetch land to shuffle away their brainstorm cards. Oh, maybe not Doomsday. My thoughts. It could be a Grixis Doomsday. Yeah, if it was like Grixis Control or any fair deck, they wouldn't have taken Force there. They would have tried to fight over the Thought Cast, I think. Come on, see to the Synod off the top. No! Betrayed. And I can't even cast Thought Cast. Yeah, God, drawing the second Mox Opal sucks so hard. That's why I always cut that card after sideboard. Having the explosiveness of it in game one is really good, but when you need your cards to count, don't like it. Ponder, okay. And I'll have a bunch of mana next turn. I can float one off Saga, tutor up an artifact, which turns on Opal. I can Lotus Petal the second Opal into play. Like my thought casts are gonna ride next turn. Unless my opponent has like Shatter in their deck. I don't know, Rakdos Charm. I don't know what they're doing. Officially have thrown me off the Doomsday scent. Okay, maybe they are just Doomsday. With a weird mana base. Nope, they're Storm. Yeah, Doomsday doesn't play Cabal, right? Is this uh, Peer into the Abyss Storm? Yeah, Burning Wish with 8 mana floating. They're probably going to get Peer. Yep. Okay. They just drew 23. Can they figure out how to kill me? I'm just going to have 6 and let them do their thing. Pedal, pedal. LED. I played Peer into the Abyss Storm on the channel once and resolved Peer and then couldn't win with the, the 21 cards I drew. It was pretty embarrassing. That doesn't happen often, though. I expect I'm very dead here. Yeah, all right. Tendrils for 11 copies. That'll do. One mana or artifact short of having a real chance there. There was a force three cards down, so if I were able to thought cast into thought cast last turn, eh. I kept a hand knowing that it was mana light. That's life. Okay, force of negation coming in. Pile up on the forces. Engineered explosives. I don't think they're going to go for empty the warrens. They're they're pretty dedicated to storming for real. They do have cabal ritual at least that cares about the graveyard. I'm not sure if they have past in flames. Okay, I'm going to bring in the lantern, probably not the cage cuz Cage shutting down Emery actually hurts a lot, as we learned last round. Pithy Needle, Retrofitter, Foundry, and Shadow Spear are all not important here. Soul Guide Lantern and the various other things can be the ones that are tutored with Saga. There's plenty of targets. Dex full of zeros, naturally. Nettle Cyst. I mean, Nettle Cyst is nice. This isn't like Oops All Spells, where all you have to do is stay alive and they'll die. Uh, this is a deck that you actually do need to present pressure and win the game. I'm going to shave one of the Opals, leave one of the Nettle Cysts in. A Shadow Spear is sort of a backdoor out to empty the Warrens if Engineered Explosives. If I don't want to bring in Engineered Explosives, which I don't, Shadow Spear on a sufficiently large construct can race a pile of goblins. I don't think that's better than what I'm already doing, though. Okay, if they empty the Warrens, me, they win. But here we go. I'm going to try it for that to not happen. Okay, on the play, I have turn one Emery. I'm going to keep this. I would rather Chalice on one than zero, but Chalicing on zero might also be fine. They, they have uh, LEDs and Lotus Petals in their deck that are pretty important to their plan, and getting turn one Emery going is pretty nice. Okay, land, bobble, have to bobble first because the chalice will turn off the bobble shortly. Emery, fill a bunch of cards, and none of them are artifacts. I am not going to bobble. I can't replay it from the graveyard because of the chalice. And being in play for Saga could matter in a couple turns. And they're a deck with this card in it. Like, let's just... Let them discard me. Swing and a miss. All right. Plus one card. We're not in great shape here, but it's not nothing either. Draw another chalice, another sigh. Not what I'm looking for. At least I get the easy choice of attack with Emery. No decisions to make there. They can't destroy chalice because I just replay it on a better number. They have to go off all at once when they go for that. They did not shuffle. Gary. 
another bobble. Does that change my interest level in Psy? I don't think so. I think Construct is still just a better way to go. Yeah, I can tutor up Opal next turn and still cast Psy. Just plunking in for damage here. Slow and steady. Hope this Chalice on zero holds. Brainstorm. The Soul Guide Lantern is the only artifact that costs one left in my deck after the way I sideboarded. So I might just tutor for that. It's another layer protection. Also with Emery, it gets a draw engine back online through the Chalice on Zero. Right, they're duressing. They get to strip the Mishra's Bauble. No black mana at the moment. The red mana is the mana that is good at killing artifacts, though. Construct. Thought Monitor. That's a fun one. Construct. Just going for the beats at this point. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'm pretty far away from Thought Monitor if I just get Opal. So I think I want to get Soul Guide Lantern. It's just like a non-zero thing I can do, where most of the things I can do right now are zero. And by zero, I mean their efficacy on the board, not their mana cost. Okay, time to determine if it's time to pop my Opal or Bobble. Um, Four, eight, nine. Yeah, I still have lethal even without the bobble. And this is a redraw for one of my eight forces at this point. Infernal Tutor is hard to make work when you don't have Lion's Eye Diamond available. Meltdown would be pretty rough. Meltdown confirmed. All right, exile each opponent's graveyard. Hope that matters. That does kill the chalice and let me replay it next turn. But if they're able to go off now that's not going to matter oh wow uh they yeah that was just pure defense they had to do that to stay alive that's rough on them great for me okay now i get to tutor up something i already have opal i drew that one do i want petal or bobble probably bobble for the redraw potential yeah there's bobble i'm gonna chalice on one this time Am I going to Chalice on 1 this time? Is that better? Hold on, let's think this out. If I Chalice on 0 again, that still turns off Lion's Eye Diamond, which we know they have Infernal Tutor in their hand, or, but they played the Lotus Petal out. They would have run out the, the LED last turn too if they had it, because they know I can just refire. Yeah, I think Chalice on 1 is going to be better this time around. Brainstorming in response. Now I might Chalice on zero. Because they just meaningfully changed the composition of their hand. Infernal Tutor matters. Okay, Emery's ability resolves. They probably should have responded to me casting Chalice, because that gives me a change of information. I'm just going to cast it for zero now, and then cast Nettle Cyst. And put a big attack back on the board. And I think I do want to bobble them. Yeah, Lotus Petal. Okay, Chalice on zero turn. Looks like it's the right call. I'm bobbling because now I do want to find one of those eight forces in the deck. Wish Claw Talisman. Okay, that can wish for whatever kills my Chalice or beats my Chalice. Small area of concern there. Drew Island. Urza Saga buffs the Nettle Cyst. Emery can cast Soul Guide Lantern. Soul Guide Lantern. An exile meltdown. I don't know if they can recur the graveyard, but I don't want to find out. One, two, three, four. I'm one short of thought monitoring. Oh, they conceded. They must not have had a second answer in their deck anywhere. Weird. Okay. I thought that Wishclaw Talisman looked pretty good, but I was wrong. Does anything change? I think I actually do want Shadow Spear. I don't want Engineered Explosives because any number that I put it on against their deck would also beat up my deck. I also can only, ex unless Mox Opal is helping, I can only cast it for zero or one, which is like blows up my chalices. Uh, but Shadow Spear is a, an honest way to beat goblins without going uh, into the weird space of Engineered Explosives. And Shadow Spear... Like, if you connect with an 8 8 lifelink, that's four more storm they need to get to kill you, which may or may not matter when they draw 21 cards. But it's worth thinking about. 
And I'm going to shave another opal. Even in this fast combo matchup, I, I think that drawing a second opal is just not something I'm okay with. I want my cards to count. I got a force and negation. I'm going to keep my hand. Opponent's on five. Keep going. Race to the bottom. Yeah, I have turn one Emery with force of negation. This is a really good start. It bobbled a redraw. Keep on digging. Not going to fight over this brainstorm on turn one. Backup force and negation. That's good stuff. Big money. I'm leading on seed of the Synod because I don't want to use my Lotus Petal to cast Emery. And getting Saga ticking up starting turn one isn't that much of a priority for me. And I am going to bobble them now to try to pick up another blue card to go with this blue card situation. Echoing Truth on top of their deck. Okay. Deal. Emery didn't mill any artifacts. I just have the bobble that I sacked here and the, the pedal in play. I'm insulated against one duress because they take one of the forces. I still have the other. Thoughtseize can take Thought Monitor and then I have to force Pitching Force. But I'm untapping into Hardcast Force next turn with the Force plus blue card backup. Echoing Truth, my Emery. Sure, send her back. That's my second blue card for Force of Negation. Now I am going to play Saga. Emery, let's refire on that. I'm not actually going to slow roll Emery as a second blue card. Just having her in play is so nice. And I'm going to bobble now because I want to draw the card before their turn. Lion's Eye Diamond, you got it. Looking for a blue card here. Bouncing Emery did stop me from leaving up Force of Negation on the hard cast. Their hand is Lion's Eye Diamond, two mystery cards. Here's the diamond. Ritual. Alright, it looks like we're just ramming into my force here. Black, black, black. Yeah, I'm just going to force this. I, I don't care what they're searching for. Just get rid of it. There's always the tension of, like, do you counter the tutor or what they tutored for? And I don't think there's that much tension in a spot like this. Because if they did just get empty the Warrens and make 8 or 10 goblins, whatever number it was, I'm in trouble. Why fuck with that? Right, I'm going to just play Psy and get some, some extra draws here. I think Psy will represent more damage and action over the course of this game that we're about to play than the extra. Saga token would. And I am popping my baubles immediately because I want to draw blue cards to go with my force. It fetched in the end step, so I didn't actually see any cards, but I'm drawing two fresh ones. If either of them are blue, I'm going to feel pretty good. I feel pretty good anyway, honestly. Like, I don't know what one card can beat me from three mana. And now that it's nothing, we're, we're good. And they scooped it up. We're 4 0. We got a trophy round coming. I'm on the draw in the final trophy round, playing for that 5-0. This hand is powerful, but not disruptive. So let's hope that this is a matchup where power is more important than disruption. Off we go. I'm keeping. Basic Mountain Regaven. Okay, uh, we don't have to play around days here. Okay, uh, if I Lotus Petal Sigh out, I get two Thopters. Where if I mox opalit, I get zero thopters. So let's do it that way. This ragament's not going to connect. And I'm going to Pithing Needle Painter Servant. Or not Painter Servant, Grindstone. <laughs> the, the part of the combo that has a, an activated ability. How about that? Grindstone. Okay, good luck, Ragavan. The only mono red deck, like mountain deck, that I've seen with Ragavan in it is Painter Stone. But this looks like just burn with Ragavan for some reason. Behold my 7-drop. <laughs> oh my god. It's just getting grosser. I had a lot of the great what now? This is a Twitter screenshot for sure. All right, Thought Monitor. Thought Monitor. <laughs> Eidolon. Or like Ereldalon. Am I right, gamers? Bobble you. Uh, another Eidolon in your hand. Sorry. I'm just going to smash with my flyers, and I'm not going to play this bobble. A card's not worth two life. I'm pretty sure I'm ahead here. Yeah, I found a blue card to go with this force that should seal the deal, unless they have some serious main deck hate. Like, I don't even know what. <laughs> Took two from your own Eidolon. Deal. This is why Ragavan generally isn't in burn decks, by the way. 
uh, it just doesn't do what burn decks want to be doing, which is uh, doing damage. Like if this was Goblin Guide, it would have at least dealt to, but instead it did not. Time to count. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, five, six, seven, eight. I want to put at least lethal for next turn. I am going to take two for chalice. I think that's worth doing. And that also produces an extra blocker with Psy. Oh, it's four, not two. Whatever. Samesies. They're, none of their creatures are connecting, and now they can't cast one drops, and I have force back up. But yeah, uh, not sure how we lose this one. Didn't think so. Okay. That was nice. <laughs> the Ragavan facing down, what was it, six or seven toughness on turn one? I like that. Okay. What's the play here? Shadow Spear is the most important card in my deck. Or I guess Chalice and, and then Shadow Spear probably. Do I want to bring in Force of Negations? Is this a Shave Opal's matchup or is this a Speed matchup? I mean, I always Shave Opal. Force of Negation is like, okay, I guess. Um, against the burn, but we just saw a bunch of creatures, including Ragavan. I don't really want Engineered Explosive. That's not how I want to interact in this matchup. Though I, I do think that one extra force is better than one Opal. I think Needle, they could have like Grim Lava Mancer or something, but nah. Uh, I'm turning that into a force negation as well. And this is what I'm going to do with this. Engineered Explosives to clear out Eidolons is nice, but it's really hard for me to get two colors of mana. It's just the three Mox Opals that can make a second color, and yeah. I'll just use my counter spells and seven mana things to beat that. Okay, let's go. The only damage I took in game one was the Ancient Tomb that I tapped. Oh, this is so tempting. I'm on the draw. I have Force of Will. Bobble redraws. I get three cards before I have to do anything. The Shadow Spear is in my hand. Oh, this is this is dirty trick. I'm going to keep it. I can at least tutor up Opal at the end of this thread. All right, come on, land. Or, you know, another seven drop. That's cool, too. It's not cool. I am going to Bobble them. I want the redraws. Early and often. They're drawing another mountain. I'm going to get Shadow Spear in before the Eidolon's down. Though I am going to force Eidolon for sure. Land? Chalice? Uh oh. We're starting to get to the point where I'm worried. I'm going to force this. All right. Land. Blue source. Okay. Uh, That is at least something. It turns on my Opal. I'm in some trouble though. If they have Meltdown or a Smash to Smithereens or like anything that collapses my tender little pillow fort here, I'm in trouble. Okay, found a blue source. That's good. Float colorless with this. I think I have to I have to get Opal. Yeah. Opal is here. I'm gonna play Chalice on one to start. Chalice on one. Ugh. The fact that they didn't cast a Flurry of Burn in response to that has me kind of worried. Like, that's just not the plan. Here's Emery. Okay, off we go. No mana. Oh, I have one Opal for mana. Wow, what did they... They had three mana and just didn't do anything for an entire turn cycle. What's going on? Are they just slow rolling a Meltdown to put me in the fucking graveyard? If they Meltdown for one, X equals one... And then Lightning Bolt Emery. This game is so over. But if they don't do all that, I'm untapping into a pretty good next turn. Oh, they're passing the turn again? What's going on? I'm so confused. And now I have Force of Negation. That's nice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can get Thought Monitor on the stack this turn. That takes off the Force of Negation I just got so excited about, though. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, this costs two. I am gonna cast my thought monitor. Dig for a blue card, dig for land, dig for more action. Let's keep it going. Okay, I got a ancient tomb can start making. Oh, this is tricky. This is not that tricky. They haven't done any damage to me yet. 
I'm going to equip my Thought Monitor with Shadow Spear right now. Let's just have a 3-3 lifelink ready for next turn. Volcanic Fallout. Oh, that's fucking sick. All right, my creatures are dead. And I took an extra two. Why didn't they do that like before I got an extra card off of Emery that facilitated me to cast another thing? All right, their deck's weird. Anything could happen. Volcanic Fallout. Uh, Got to watch out for that one. Maybe their hand is just like three Ragavans right now, and that's why they haven't done anything. Okay, I can tap Ancient Tomb again to play Nettle Cyst, which will end the game next turn if it connects with Shadow Spear, or I'm going to play it slow and not tap my Ancient Tomb. I can make a servo with Retrofitter Foundry, smashing my Chalice. Um, well, that's clearly important to you. That means it's important to me. I can tap Ancient Tomb here basically for free because I'm taking three if this resolves. So I can take two to make it not resolve. Oh, backup smash. Now I'm in trouble. I think I already was, but definitely gonna end quick from here. Wow, Chandra's Incinerator. Does this have Trample? Yup, sure does. Okay. Well, folks. One, two, three, four, five. I could put a five, five into play. Uh, it would cost me two life to do it. Wait, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I can... I have one chance to rule them all here. All right, I have a 6-6 six, six lifelink versus their 6-6 six, six trample. If they can kill this thing, I'm in trouble. If they can't, I probably win. Seal of Fire. That doesn't kill me. They are attacking. Gonna block. Have to. Required. Wow. Wow. Fire Aesthetic Pillar, so you're saying there's a chance. We're getting Nettle Sisty around here. One card left in their hand. Here's another Nettle Cyst. I'll take the two to make this happen. Nettle Cyst, it's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Don't think I need to tap Ancient Tomb to equip this with anything now. Seal of Fire, targeting me. They must be enabling an Incinerator or a Light Up the Stage. Yeah, it's Incinerator, okay. Don't care about that, right? That also has cost two to equip. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I can equip pain free and just crunch for a fugzillion. Equip Shadow Spear. Equip Nettle Cyst. Attack for 15 life link. I'm going to make a servo before damage and get a, an extra point. I'm basically paying two to gain, or paying one to deal an extra one. But they packed it up. Another trophy. I didn't talk about this at the beginning of the league because uh, it's been a while, but Chris has been a Patreon patron for a long time. He submitted a lot of these blue artifact decks, like the various Echo iterations and stuff, and I trophy with a lot of them. I think Chris has submitted more trophy decks than anyone to this channel, and we just added another one to the, the trophy room. This deck was great. We got to grind out the blue decks. We got to dumpster the non-blue decks. Porting into eight Force of Wills, or Force of Negation added on top of the Force of Will, is such a sick play pattern. Like, being able to be a pseudo-Delver of Secrets deck against the Unfair decks, and then being able to be a bigger control deck against the control decks, just... This deck is really good. The, the pinch you can put on basically everyone is really effective. On the flip side, if you're trying to beat this deck, you need dedicated hate. Like, my build of control right now has so much hate for specifically this kind of strategy because it does so many different things. Let's look at my current build of Bant right now. This is the version that I think is the best build for the Magic Online meta. This is what I would play if I was trying to win a Legacy PTQ tomorrow. And this build has Null Rod, Pernicious Deed, and Seeds of Innocence in the sideboard. That's three cards that are basically specifically for Saga and Artifact decks, plus two Dress Down main. Like, that's how much respect I'm giving these Saga decks and the Artifact combo decks. Uh, it's, it's a very serious part of the metagame right now. Back to the deck at hand. It's powerful. You all saw how it works. Psy goes one way, Saga goes another way, Emery is working in the background the whole time, the eight casts when they go off, you got Chalice, you got Force. Two somehow felt like exactly the right number of Nettle Cyst. Whoever tuned this deck, uh, I don't know if this is Chris's personal deck or if he pulled it from a 5-0 list. Whoever 
built this list originally, did the math. Uh, the two nettle cysts felt great. I'm not really sure about engineered explosives in the sideboard. I guess that's specifically for chalice mirrors because chalice on zero really does mess up your deck pretty hard. And that is one of the ways you can answer a chalice on zero. So uh, I guess that makes sense. And Delver also. Yeah, I, I'm. we didn't play against it, so it wasn't on my radar specifically, but explosives for one, which is the most common color you can do it for with this mono blue deck, is pretty good against Delver, of course. So uh, yeah, all right. Maybe that makes sense. We didn't really use the explosives, never reached for the dismember, never reached for the spell bomb. Raven form is sweet tech, though. Too bad we didn't get to use it. But we 5 0 the league. Easy trophy. Thanks, Chris. Eight cast is great. Thank you all for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the Patreon. Check out the merch. All that stuff in the video description. And thanks for being here. See you next time.